Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. We're talking about digital analog converter. Last time we talked about the principle of the of this. Today we're talking about how we can really achieve this goal. We said last time, oh, we need a very wide variance of, of resistors and they all need to be very accurate and so this is too expensive, this is not working. Today I'm showing you an approach how to, to realize those things with only two resistors and they are only double in size, the so-called R2R digital analog converter. Yeah. So the basic principle looks like that. Yeah. So we have again somewhere a, a supply voltage UV yeah. and the supply voltage let's also show you at a 4-bit analog digital converter, a digital analog converter looking like that. And there are again switches. Again switches and each switch again has a resistor. So this now looks pretty much the same like last time, right? If we compare this to last time's approach, right now there's not much difference. Okay. However, so this is again here plus UV. And we have again here the switches S0, S1, S2, S3. But now the second is always leading to, to ground. Okay, so the switch is not simply open, it's switched to ground. Okay, and here at the last one, I also have a resistor going to ground. And in between, I also have resistors. Now it's getting more complicated, right? However, here I'm already done. Here I have already my output voltage UA. Okay. And now I tell you, this is 2R, these are double resistors and these are resistors here half the size and I, st I say now this is working this is working this is how it looks like this is working you believe me right turn off huh? you don't believe me I'm going to prove it but not with a 4-bit because this is quite a lot of work. It's even a lot of work with a 2-bit converter. So I'm now drawing a 2-bit converter. So this is the 4-bit variant. Yeah? And in comparison, the 2-bit variant would look like this. Not much of a surprise. Only two times, then two times ground, then two times the switches, yeah? then two times those two, two R resistors. In between I have one R here, here I have this two R to ground, uh, and here I have the output voltage, and here we are at ground. So here we are at, at plus UV, here we have UA, and that's it. This, this is S0, and this is S1. And we want now to calculate UA depending on S0 and S1. So we make a table S0, S1, and then we have UA. And we will do this for 0, 0, for 1, 0, for 0, 1, and for 1, 1. All right, and see what UA is 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 good for. Yeah? So I will use another plate. I say S zero is zero, and S one is zero. What is left is everything is to zero. This means immediately UA equals zero volt. 
Huh? Because if both, this there's ground, there's ground, everywhere is ground, zero volts. Huh? So we have zero. This was easy, right? Now S0 is 1 and S1 is 0. Let's see how this looks like. I will start here at UV. Huh? I will start here at UV. So here we have plus UV. Then the first thing we see is a 2R. Ah, here. Here we have nothing. Here the first thing we see is a 2R. And then we separate. On one hand we go into a 2R. And then we add ground. And on the other side we are going to an R. Here we have U. UA and then we have 2R and then we go to ground. So here those two, this is how this looks like. And here we have UA. Alright, this is just drawn a little bit different than this one and now let's start to calculate this. Let's start, let's do a little bit electric electric calculations. Why not? So those two resistors are in series. Yeah? So we have here 2R. We have here 3R. We have here 2R. It's looking like this. Yeah? Here we have UV. All right. I hope two times resistors in series at each other, and now we have two parallels. We have two parallel. So what actually is this? Two R. How much is this? Yeah. So it's two. It's three R multiplied by two R divided by three R plus 2r. So this is 2 times 3 is 6r squared divided by 5r. Zack, zack. So this is 6 divided by 5r. Good. Huh? Here we have uv. And here, these two are 10 divided by 5R. Alright? So this is 10 times, and this is only 6 times. This, this is the ratio. This is the ratio. Yeah? So we have here a total R. of 16 divided by 5R plus UV. This means this voltage here U1, I call it U1, why not? Yeah, equals uh, UV multiplied by 6 divided by 5R divided by 16 divided by 5r. Zack, zack. Zack, zack. So this is uh, 6 divided by 16. Yeah. This is 3 divided by 8. Yeah. This is this. Yeah. This we have here. Yeah. Here we have, this is the voltage you want. Here we also have the voltage you want. So UA in this case, yeah, it's U1 multiplied by uh, 2R divided by 3R. And this is 
u v multiplied by 3 divided by 8 multiplied by 2 divided by 3 zack zack yeah, equals u v multiplied by 2 divided by 8 equals u v multiplied by 1 quarter yeah. with this switching the output is uv multiplied by one quarter. So this is uv multiplied by one one quarter. Yes, one quarter. This is this, right? Now let's have a look how it would look like if we have the switching. as 0 equals 0 and as 1 equals 1. Yeah. Here. This is 1, this is 0. Yeah. So we're starting at uv. Yeah. The first thing we see is a 2r. Then we are already at ua. Yeah. So here's uv, here's ua, and the other side we have a 2r, or we have a r, then we have in parallel a 2r here, going to ground, and here a 2r going to ground, and here we are at ground. This is how this looks like. Hmm? This looks now much more convenient because I have a 2R and a 2R and two resistors in parallel is half the resistance. So it looks like that. Here's R, here's 2R and here's R. This is this. Of course, I can calculate here, it's 2r multiplied by 2r divided by uh, 2r plus 2r. Yeah? 2 times 2 is 4ar squared. And here we have uh, 4, 4r. It's R. This is how this turns out. Okay, those two in series. We have 2R. We have 2R. Here we have UA. Here we have UV. Yeah. And, well, actually UA equals and now it's uv multiplied by the complete so it's it's 2r divided by 2r plus 2r equals uv multiplied by 2r divided by 4r gone yeah equals uv multiplied half. Okay, so here we have uv multiplied by one half. All right, and now let's also check how it's working with s0 equals 1 and s1 equals 1. This is now a little bit more complicated because here we have uv, yeah? then we have two times On one side we have the 2R, All right. then we are at UA, here we have UV, here we have UA, then we have 
1R. In parallel, there's this 2R. This one. This one. Then we are combining each other and there is a 2R. Then we are at ground. Right? This is how this would look like if both are one. Oh, maybe I make it a little bit like that, that we can see better. Now, let's again combine those. Yeah. These are 3R here. These are 2R. These are 2R. We had somewhere a 3R and a 2R in parallel. It's exactly like that. Exactly like that. Yeah. And this turned out to be UV. This turned out to be here. 6 divided by 5R. So here we have 6 divided by 5R. And here we have 2R and this is 10 divided by 5R. Exactly the same. Yeah? So how much is this U1? Yeah? U1 equals yeah? it's uh, UV multiplied by 10 divided by 5R divided by 16 divided by 5R. Yeah. So this is zack, 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 zack. This is UV multiplied by 10 divided by 16. This is U1. Here we have U2. And U2 equals UV multiplied by 6 divided by 5R divided by 16 divided by 5R. Yeah. So this is again, this is UV multiplied 6 divided by 16. Okay. Here we have U2. Here we have U1. Here we have U1. And here, how much is U3? U3 equals, this is U2 here. U2 multiplied by R divided by 3R. Yeah, zack, zack. And this is U2 is UV multiplied by 6 divided by 16 multiplied by 1 divided by 3. Zack, zack. We have here 2. Yeah. So this is then UV multiplied by 2 divided by 16. Mm -hmm. And how much is UA? UA is the sum of U1 and U3. U1 plus U3. And this is UV multiplied by 10 divided by 16. This is U1. Plus, and now U3, UV multiplied by 2 divided by 16. This is this. Yeah? And here we reach UV multiplied by 12 divided by 16. And this is UV multiplied by 3 quarters. <laughs> Finally we got a number. And here we are writing UV multiplied by three quarters. So every step the output voltage is rising by a quarter. Starting from zero, then one quarter, two quarters, three quarters of the supply voltage. And this is exactly what a digital analog converter is doing. Yeah? Depending here, if this is one, it's one quarter. If this is one, it's two quarters. And if both of one, it's three quarters and zero is zero. It's working. Yeah? And every bit number is working as well. Yeah? So it's much cheaper because you only did need two 
accurate values of resistance. These two values are just a factor two apart. So that's easier to achieve. This is how digital analog converters are working. Period. R to R digital analog converter. When we're talking about analog digital converters, there are more working principles than one. Basically one. There are much more. And in next videos, in upcoming videos, we are going to talk about which possibilities we would have to make an analog digital conversion. Next time, first, first method to make analog digital conversion. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.